evening, friends. This is your host to welcome you through the creaking door in the inner sanctum. Come in, come in. We had a surprise visitation here a scream or two ago. A sightseeing delegation simply crazy to take it all in. One onlooker's mouth was so agape you'd think his face was split from ear to ear. Confidentially charm it was. <laughs> the head of the delegation was terribly proud of his honorary title. Poor chap, it was the only head he had. <laughs> ah, yes. Things went along cozily until some wag suggested holding hands. We brought out a trunk full of hands we keep for just such occasions. <laughs> Tonight's Inner Sanctum Mystery, Between Two Worlds, was written by John Robert and stars Mason Adams in the role of Sam with Ann Shepard as Connie. It's Yuletide Week in South Chicago as a flash electric storm whips the streets. Inside the 10th District Police Station, Chief Matthews and his clerk Daly are passing the time over a game of chess. Suddenly, like a bolt from the heavens, a window pane crashes. And a parcel fastened to a fist-sized rock drops to the station house floor. It's a package tied to a rock, Chief. And what's in it? Uh, a notebook, Chief. A five-and-dime notebook. And all written up like a confession. It's signed, Sam Tyler. Sam Tyler, never heard of him. Read me what Sam Tyler's got to say. Ever come face-to-face with death? And just stand around helplessly waiting for it to tap you. Waiting, waiting for, the for the final, final count. Yes. While you're waiting, your heart is a big clock ticking off your doom. And inside your head, a moving picture's going on. You're looking at the story of your life. And it's not a pretty story. It's all black. It's all bad. You hate to die without a single good mark in the big book. If you only had just enough time to chalk up one good deed. It happened like that with me. I came face to face with death. Death was Nick Fazenda. I'd lost face with Nick. The big guy liked his racket boys tough and nerveless, and I had a streak of chicken, Nick said. I had a streak of chicken. And I knew too much to be trusted alive. What do you want, it, chicken? Nick, don't do it. Give me another chance. Dying like this scares me. What's waiting for me after you pull that trigger, Nick? I haven't done one decent thing since I was born. Here, you picked the wrong setup. You should have joined the Boy Scouts. So long, chicken. The shot made a noise like a TNT charge, but I hadn't felt the impact. I hadn't felt anything. Either I was paralyzed with fear or dead to feeling. Or Nick had missed. I watched Nick stare unbelievingly and aim again. An easy bullseye at five yards with Nick a crack shot, but still no impact. I was still standing up. Kid, hold down. You're dead. No, Nick. I'm alive. You can't kill me. Nick, you're seeing a miracle happen. You're crazy. Nick, I'm going to get that chance. I'm going to live. Two more shots, but still no impact. I was alive, uninjured. Something was happening to Nick. And his face was purpling, as if he was suffocating. Yet some invisible stranger had his hands around Nick's throat, strangling him. I'm choking to death. I hope. Nick was on the floor. I watched the color wash out of his face, watched him go rigid. I crouched and listened to his heart. Not a sound, not a murmur. He was dead. Nick had dropped dead. I'd seen a miracle happen. I hopped a midnight freight heading east. I was in a boxcar loaded with crates of eggs still sweating over my narrow escape. And I got a spooky feeling that I wasn't alone. I lay still, choking back my breath with my hand tight around Nick's gun. You have no need for the gun, Sam. How did you know my name? I know all about you, Sam. Put down your gun. It's up and the trigger is cocked, so no tricks are you're a goner. <laughs> a goner. Too late for that, Sam. I am a goner already. What kind of crazy talk? I died, Sam, just one year ago. 
you're, you're your own ghost. Uh, get your hands up high, Mr. Whisker, so I can frisk you. I reached to frisk him, slap his pockets for a rod, but there was no one to touch. I was only grabbing at empty air. I told you I died a year ago, Sam. I saved your life tonight. I gave you your wish. Your chance to do one decent thing before you died. Did you mean the promise you made? No. A scram. It drive me crazy. And you lied in the face of eternity. I'll have to recall the time given you. What do you mean, recall the time? You're living on borrowed time, Sam. You were meant to die by Nick's first bullet. You remember how Nick died? Yeah. All of a sudden he couldn't breathe. But like like his lungs were gone and his heart was calling quits. Like you're beginning to feel now. What? Like I... I... I can't breathe. I'm choking. My lungs are exploding. When I came to... Mr. Whiskers was smiling over You me. did mean your promise to tomorrow, didn't you, Sam? Sure. Sure I did. Anything you say. Then continue on to Chicago. When you arrive there, spend your time waiting in a restaurant called the Spread Eagle. Sooner or later you will be approached. You are to lend yourself to any situation that arises. Any situation, understand? Sure. Sure, I understand. This, uh... This good deed I'm to do on borrowed time. What's your interest in it? Deeply personal, Sam. I am no longer among the living, but I have no place among the dead. I walk between two worlds. You see, Sam... In life, I didn't have one decent thing to point to either. Mm. Through you, I hope to find rest. In Chicago, I tried to get Mr. Whiskers out of my mind. <laughs> I'd had a bad dream. It had to be a bad dream. I went to the spread eagle, afraid not to. I just sat like a frozen mummy ordering ham sandwiches. I couldn't eat and coffee. I couldn't swallow and listening to downbeat piano music. Hey, mind if I join you? Pull up a chair. I'm Tresca, Sam. You know my name, huh? I know your name and all about you. Where you come from, your record... And why you're uh, on the land. <laughs> you know all about me, too, huh? I've watched you. I had a confidential operative check into your uh, pedigree. What for? Well, frankly, because I need just such a person as you. For a certain uh, venture I'm involved in. What do you mean, just such a person as me? I wanted a man who's at home in, shall we say, unconventional activities. A man I can trust because he doesn't dare go to the police or uh, even to the underworld. And I'm your man, I guess. You definitely are. Okay, let's go. How did you agree just like that? Without even uh, discussing price or the nature of the work? You said I was your man. Fact is, Tresca, I'm your man. And there's nothing I can do about it. This is our destination, Sam. Here? In the middle of nowhere? Up that footpath over there, say, uh, one-eighth of a mile, you'll find a private lake. I own it. All right for you. Yeah, thank you. And there lies your uh, first chore. Behind us on the floor of the car is a burlap sack. Its weight, I would estimate, is uh, 118 pounds, more or less. We've been riding a corpse around. We have. 
You're to carry the burlap bag and contents up that footpath to the lake and drop it in there. And without tears, Sam. Mind you, without tears. From this point on, as the saying goes, we're in business, Sam. What's the next event? Wedded bliss. For you. I'm to get married. You are. Tomorrow evening, you'll call on your radiant bride-to-be at uh, this address. Fifteen candle ever walk. Yeah. And <laughs> try to look more cheerful, Sam. Love comes but once into every man's life. I could hear Mr. Whiskers giving me the horse laugh somewhere as I climbed the steps to 15 Cantilever Walk. Big gray stone as if someone had imported the side of a mountain. Iron over every window. And gloomy enough to give even a crepe hang in a St. Vitus dance. I rang the door buzzer. Hi, Sam. Do I kill the bride before or... After the ceremony. Make yourself at home, Sam. Wander about. I'll see what's keeping your blushing bride. I wandered about with my eyes popping over the expensive layout. Whatever Tresca's game was, it wasn't Penny Ante. The joint screen, big stakes, right down to the needlepoint footstool. Where did Mr. Whiskers figure in it? A minute later in the library, I began to catch on a little. Mr. Whiskers was right in the game. There, sitting over the fireplace in a big gold frame, was Mr. Whiskers. You like the portrait, Sam? Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's quite a painting. Uh, who is Mr. Whiskers? <laughs> Mr. Whiskers. That's a trifle irreverent, but an apt nickname. He was my brother Stephen. Was, huh? He's dead? You sound as if you were ready to dispute it. I just asked, is he dead? Very much so. Dead and buried. Your manner is a little odd, Sam. I'm sorry. I'm, uh, Reggie. <laughs> get married is an idea I've got to... <laughs> got to get used to. Well, <laughs> then meet your bride. That's one way of bringing the idea to roost. Uh, Constance. Sam, uh, this is my niece, Constance. Constance, this is your fiancé, Sam Tyler. Hello, Sam. Hello. Well, I'll leave you to get acquainted. <laughs> you want to exchange premarital views on love and uh, homemaking. There wasn't a blush in my blushing bride. Her cheeks were chalk white. Her face had the look of death. Like some creeping sickness had already called two strikes on her. Sat down at the piano. I stood watching her. Looks like you're stuck with me, kid. If Tresca has his way. Tresca will have his way. What's your angle, kid? Why is the niece of a million dollar layout ready, willing, and able to marry a deadbeat ex con and mug? I'm obliged to marry. What do you mean, obliged to marry? The terms of my father's will. I. Inherit his estate at midnight tomorrow. Only if I marry. It's beginning to make some sense. Mr. Whiskers up there. Was your father? Yes. But well, why pick me? A mug your uncle brought home. Why not why not scout your own, dearly intended? I can't. <coughs> hey. I'm not. Well enough to... <coughs> hey, you sound as if you're not even well enough to live. No, Sam. I'm not well enough to live much longer. We were married with Tresca and the scrubwoman standing as witnesses. 
I shacked up in the big jail at 15 can't ever walk. I was the legal husband of an heiress, but I wasn't congratulating myself on my good luck. There was a hidden gimmick somewhere. I pried. I searched Connie's room. I found the hidden gimmick in a lady's handbag. The handbag was crammed with the usual junk girl stock, a powder case, lipstick, nail, file, comb, plus a driver's license and a Christmas club bank book. But they weren't in Connie's name. The name on them read Ann Powers. I got it as fast as I read the name. The girl was a ringer, another patsy in Tresca's game. You needn't feel too guilty, Sam. What? I left my handbag where you could find it. I had to look. Tresca killed his niece and hired you to stand in for her. Are you going to deny that? No. How did you come to fall in with Tresca? I was in a restaurant. Tresca came along and hired me. My life, Sam, every bit of it hadn't been good. I couldn't die leaving it. All bad. You wanted to do one decent thing before you died. Yes, yes. <laughs> you made the wish and Mr. Whiskers appeared and took you up on it. He sent you to Tresca and Tresca hired you. You're going to tell me that's what happened. You're hurting me. Is that what happened? I asked. No. I don't know anything about this obsession you have with Mr. Whiskers. <laughs> what good deed can we do around here, kid? Tresca murdered his niece to steal the estate for himself. We're just pawns. Hooray for Tresca. Connie's father left the money to charity if his daughter failed to marry. Constance refused to marry. She wanted the bundle to go to charity. Yes. To atone for her father's past. His life hadn't been much either. A million dollars to charity, that's a lot of squaring up. That could be our one decent act, yours and mine, Sam. Make Tresca's scheme fail. Quite an ambitious <gasps> undertaking for newlyweds. Huh? Tresca! Oh, now, don't you two look at me as if I were another supernatural or occult visitation. I entered through a secret sliding panel on the north wall. I overheard your odd tate tate simply by donning earphones. The room is wired. You don't miss a trick, huh? What's the gun for? What are guns for? There was a charge like stale air exploding. I spun around but didn't drop. <laughs> this was where I had come in. Tresca, like Nick, could empty his gun point blank, but he couldn't rub me out. It was exactly where I had come in. There in front of me, Tresco was getting the same dose Nick got. His face was purpling as if he was suffocating. As if some invisible someone had his hands around Tresco's throat. Having trouble with your breathing, Tresco? I... I can't breathe. I... Don't... I... I... Was on the floor, rigid, out for keeps like I'd seen Nick once. Is he dead? Deader than a doornail. <laughs> we sat around the three of us. Tresca, the girl, and me, waiting for Mr. Whiskers. We sat all day and all night and through half the next day, but Mr. Whiskers didn't show. Mr. Whiskers didn't show as if he never was. Sam. What? He exists only in your mind. <laughs> You're waiting for a man who died a year ago. <laughs> How do you explain that to yourself? I don't explain it. Maybe Mr. Whiskers doesn't have to come anymore. His job is done. One last thing, and our job is done. What? One last thing, Sam? Cops. We tell them what gives and hand a million bucks over to charity. That's the one decent act, the purpose that brought us here. It's the purpose that brought you here. I just hired out to Tresco for pay. What about that wish you made on the docks, kid? It was different on the docks. I was sick and broken, hopeless. I'm not broke or hopeless anymore. I can buy a cure. I can take a trip. Spend money, all kinds of money. Have a good time I never knew. I can laugh. You're saying we shut up and keep the estate between us. <laughs> Why not? 
In a way, we earned it. No good, kid. I've got a promise I've got to keep. A promise you made to a ghost? My promise to tomorrow. But if you can't keep that promise because I won't let you... What if I won't let you cheat me out of my one chance to live? Oh. Like this? She backed away from the piano with Tresca's gun in her hand. The gun is no good. I don't kill, kid. You saw how I don't kill. That was before, Sam. You do kill now. No, kid! No, no, no! There's uh, one last line, Chief, a sort of a dying scribble. The girl was right. I did kill now. That's the end of it, Chief. What do you make of it? Suppose we let the answer write itself at 15 cantilever walk. Well, the confession is the McCoy, all right. That's Sam Tyler on the sofa, Tresca on the floor, and there's the girl out cold, still holding the gun. Got any pulse? No. She's dead. No visible cause, Daly. Just dead. I'm getting a faint pulse on Tyler. Sam. <sighs> Sam Tyler. What? You the police? Yes. The girl shot you and you just about bled to death. You know the whole story, Sam. So the girl got to do that last decent thing after all. The girl didn't do anything. Her heart blew out after shooting you. We read your confession down at headquarters. My confession? Yes. This five and dime notebook. Yeah, see it? It was tied to a rock and tossed through the window at headquarters. You wrote it, but what we want to know is who delivered it. <laughs> I, I didn't write that confession, mister. <laughs> I didn't write it for deliberate. <laughs> you didn't write... And it was the girl. She had enough left to get downtown... And get your story to us. If not you, it had to be the girl. <laughs> You'll have to ask Mr. Whiskey about that. If you hurry, you might catch him somewhere between two worlds. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Gee. <laughs> Ira taxpayer just told me the state of Illinois intends to mail a bill to Mr. Whiskers for that broken police station window. They're busy digging up a dead postman so he can speed delivery of the bill out of this world. <laughs> Sad about Tresca, a perfect plot gone to pot because his brother, although kaput, wouldn't stay quiet. <laughs> We invite you to join us again next week at this time for Inner Sanctum. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education.